Do you have an electric pressure cooker you're wondering what to do with? Maybe it's been sitting around and you haven't quite figured out how to use it? Well, I'm Tara Gregory and I'm the Family and Consumer Sciences agent in Chatham County and I'm going to talk about the electric pressure cooker, the Instant Pot we have here. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the pieces that come with it and how to use it for when you're ready to jump in to try out some recipes. So this is our electrical unit here. This is an electric pressure cooker, different from a pressure canner. We don't can in this unit. This is just to prepare foods at a higher temperature and a higher pressure, which lowers the cooking time. Some of you may be familiar with the pressure cookers that go on the stove top, have the valve, and you have to watch the pressure and, and adjust the temperature yourself. And a lot of times people tell me that they're a little afraid of using those. With the electric pressure cooker, it's different. You have this unit here that will monitor that pressure and temperature for you. So if it ever got too high, it brings the temperature down, brings that pressure down itself. So you're not having to monitor it or adjust yourself. Um, it will turn itself off or adjust as needed. So it is a safer option uh, if you're worried about monitoring that, that pressure yourself. So we have the electrical unit here. And inside, you'll see we have a heating element. This is not where you want to put the food or water, any liquids here. That's what your inner pot is for. So this comes with the unit and it goes inside just like that. And this is where you'll put your ingredients for your yummy recipes. So the, you, the set comes with a few other pieces as well. So we have a trivet uh, that goes inside the inner pot. And that is very helpful for when you are preparing foods that you don't want to be immersed in the liquid in the bottom of the pot. The thing is, is you have to use liquid with your pressure cooker. That's what allows it to build the pressure to cook the foods. So when you're cooking something like the hard boiled eggs, I will show in another video. Uh, you'll put those eggs on the trivet and they stay out of the water so they're not necessarily being boiled in, in the bottom of the pan. So you also have a little measuring cup that you can use or not use. This set came with a small ladle and sort of a flat spoon. I like to use the flat spoon for grains like if I were to make rice or other, or other whole grains, um, it's nice for scooping that out like that. Now there's lots of other gadgets you can get for your pressure cookers, uh, depending on what recipes you wanted to make. Uh, so up to you and what you find most useful. So here is the lid we have to our unit. I want to show you this inner ring is made of silicone. You'll, you'll see it can pop right off. Um, you wanna always make sure that's snapped into place, just like that. That's what's gonna help you get the seal uh, when you put the lid on and build that pressure. A lot of times um, people will buy extras of these because these will take on odors and sometimes stains from some foods, especially like strongly uh, flavored, flavored uh, foods. So sometimes people have one for those savory dishes and one for maybe oatmeal or rice pudding, some sweet dishes, just to keep those flavors from intermingling. Um, so you'll see here we have the, the vent that pops off for easy cleaning. Sometimes if you're cooking things like rice um, or soups or stews, it could have some uh, residue on there most likely while it's cooking. So on this side, we have our valve. The valve turns from a venting position to a sealing position. And that's gonna make a difference for when you're ready to cook. You always want it in the sealing position when you're using your pressure cooker. Unless you are using it to, on the slow, slow cooker set, setting, um, you would have it on venting. But you'll see that in your manual, it will remind you of that. On this unit, it's uh, maybe different from the one you have, uh, but venting can go on either side and the ceiling is in the center. But just pay attention to your own unit to see what you see there. I have a pink, pink valve. This is extremely handy because when the pressure is high in the unit, this will pop up and you know that it's high pressure. We're not going to open it. And in case you forget that, 
this, the lid will lock and not let you open it up. So that's a good safety feature um, for this unit. After you finish cooking, whether you decide to naturally release, allow the unit to naturally release that pressure, which means you just leave it sitting, and over time that pressure goes down as everything's cooling off, this um, valve will go from up to down to the splat position, and you'll know I can open it up now. Another way to release the pressure is a quick release. So that's gonna be the unit finishes cooking, it beeps at you, lets, lets you know it's all done, um, you can, using a utensil, like a wooden spoon or something, you can press it into the venting position to allow that steam to escape, and that's going to bring the pressure and temperature down more quickly. So it'll depend. Sometimes when you're reading a recipe, it'll tell you what to do, uh, whether it's a natural release or a quick release. All right, so when we're ready, say we've got our food inside, we're going to put our lid on here. Okay, so we've got our lid on. It's beeping to let me know it's connected. And if we take a look at our unit, or our buttons here, on this unit you have lots of options. It may be overwhelming to you to see rice, porridge, uh, steam, cake, even cake can be prepared in your Instant Pot. Um, this may be a little overwhelming. What I usually say is it's, it's best to use a recipe that tells you how many minutes and at high pressure or low pressure. I almost always see recipes say high pressure. Um, so if we were gonna do this manually, I'm gonna select the manual button. On your unit, it might say pressure cook. So we'll press that manual or pressure cook and then these minutes pop up and you can adjust your minutes to however many you need. Now, when you set your minutes, you just pause and it will kick in and that means it's gonna turn on and start to raise the temperature and the pressure. So you can hear that. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this since we don't have anything inside. But when that beeps, what that's saying is the timer's not gonna start counting down. It's gonna start building up that pressure and when it hits that pressure to cook that food, then those minutes start ticking down and it'll beep when those minutes are, are done. So you do have to allow for time, not only for the cooking time, but for the getting up to pressure, which the more you have in the pot, the longer it'll take to get up to pressure. And then you also have to allow time for the pressure to come down so that you can open your lid. And if you wanted to give these buttons a try, you definitely could and play around with it. It's just gonna probably work out. You'll have more control over your recipe and food when you do it manually and kind of find that sweet spot that works for the way you like that food to be prepared. But it never hurts to give these a try and see how they turn out and you can adjust from there. So this is your introduction to a, an electric pressure cooker. And stay tuned, there's gonna be more videos on conducting the initial water test. When you open up your unit, you can use that water test to make sure everything's working properly. And then we'll try out some foods in our pressure cooker.